Uh, Ms. Dean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and thank you, Director Ray, for being here today, more importantly for your service to our country, and especially the tr tremendous talented men and women of the FBI. Thank you for their service. Uh, as you've said often, the mission of the FBI is to protect the American people and to uphold the Constitution of the United States, two important parts of that mission. My first focus today will be on the scourge of gun violence and how we can partner, continue to partner, because it's going to be all hands on deck in order to reduce and I hope someday eliminate the scourge of gun violence. Before I came to Congress, I served in the Pennsylvania House for six and a half years and had the chance uh, to meet with the, the state police who administered our PIC system, the Pennsylvania Instant Check System. Uh, and as you know, uh, you, the FBI, administer the NIC system. The difference between the two systems is important. Uh, the NICS system, as you know, has, uh, and both, I want to say, operate with tremendous speed. I give all those who administer these uh, great credit. Um, the PIC system uh, has a difference that I think is critically important that I hope we will someday build into the NICS system. PICS allows 10 days for the state to try to get clarity on a background check uh, to see if the person is a prohibited purchaser. And after that 10 days, if there is not clarity, uh, it defaults to no. Uh, the NIC system, as you know, uh, allows just three days, uh, and if there, it can't get clarity, it defaults to allowing uh, the purchase of the gun. Uh, sadly, we know uh, that it was uh, that same loophole that allowed Dylan Roof, uh, after three days, to purchase a weapon which he later used to murder nine people at Emanuel AME Church in Charleston. Uh, just uh, several days later, it was revealed that he was a prohibited purchaser. In 2018, more than 27, uh, excuse me, 270,000 NICS background checks not completed within three business days resulted in more than 4,800 uh, gun transfers to people whose background checks ultimately revealed they were prohibited purchasers. Per the most recent FBI report, about 3,000 people a year uh, passed the NICS background checks as a result of this loophole. You know that we passed H.R. Uh, 1446, uh, which would be the enhanced background closing of that Charleston loophole. Do you agree that NICS could be a more effective background system if we put forward that logical 10-day default to no? Well, um, as is customary, I'm not in a position to comment on specific legislative proposals as FBI director but, uh, and get out in front of the administration on that. But what I would say is that our NICS folks work incredibly hard. Um, and last year, even with 40 million, a record number of background checks, uh, and even with the pandemic, they were still able to process 96 percent uh, or close to 96 percent within the required time. But certainly it gets hard and COVID made it even harder in many ways because, of course, part of the drill, and it's probably the same with PICS, they have to reach out to the state and local. Uh, what we know, I, I appreciate that. And I, yeah. I absolutely admire the, the work and the commitment of the folks who are administering NICS. But with their pressure, the increased numbers and the increased pressure to get it done in three days, otherwise it's allow the purchase. Uh, that has proven to be a lethal loophole, uh, as we know way too many times. Uh, you know, in November of 2017, Congress passed uh, the Fix Nix Act, and it was following another shooting uh, in a church in Sutherland Spring, Texas, uh, to ensure that federal agencies were reporting convictions. Uh, that would prohibit firearm ownership. However, recent data shows a gross underreporting uh, coming from uh, DOD in which all four military branches provided less than 31% of the requisite background check information. Is the FBI committed to supporting agencies to meet the fixed NICS requirements? Uh, well, certainly the fixed NICS fix Act uh, has been a, a big help to us, uh, and we've had a significant, very significant increase in new records over the past three years. Uh, we are trying to do our part to engage with our partners, um, federal, state, and local, uh, to increase the information that's in there. That's the whole point. That's the essence of the system, uh, and we're doing a lot of outreach and engagement 
Uh, we've got massive staffing and technological resources devoted to it, and we've asked for more in the various budgets uh, that have been put forward. I, I know my time is up, sadly. There's so much more I'd like to ask you about, um, but I do hope that FBI will partner with us, the legislative branch in this administration, to do something about uh, gun violence. Uh, also, the second area that I wanted to make sure we talk about at some point is the use of force statistics and the collection of that data. Uh, so maybe I'll have a chance to talk with you and your staff uh, separately and offline. With that, I yield back and I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlelady yields back. Christopher Ray was uh, fr flat out lying right there. And the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is. Because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, I, I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases, and this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like unlike I've ever seen in a case, uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. He made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically, as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? 
They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is when you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other capital she's ever been in is a state capital that's open 24 seven. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they wanna prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is, it's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.